Mes chers amis, je, vais, je vous demande d'accueillir... Dear friends, please, let's welcome our panelist with Afsat Abiola, the chairwoman of Women in Africa. Please come forward. Mrs. Isabelle Bebea, the director of PPI France, please come forward. Online will be joined by Mamadou Touré, the Minister of Promotion of Youth, Professional Integration and Civic Service of Côte d'Ivoire. Please give a round of applause for Mamadou Touré. Mrs. Mariam Diop, the Regional Manager of Francophone Africa in the International Financial Corporation. And finally, Arnaud Mercier, who's here to represent the Department of Bouches-du-Rhône as well as the ex-Marseille-Provence Metropolis, is in charge of innovation. Please give him a round of applause. Eh bien, ma foi, donc euh, j'attends un, euh, un petit signal pour me dire. Can you please tell me if the minister is online? In the meantime, I will launch the discussion. Today we're going to talk about innovation, which is becoming a reference lens for a partnership between Europe and Africa, especially for the EU partnership. And uh, Mr. Mercier, can you, you will tell us what role our metropolis can play to embody this win-win partnership. To start with, we will talk about the uh, challenges and opportunities of African and European cooperation. And uh, over to the minister. Good morning. Please give a round of applause for Mamadou Touré. And uh, to be... Uh, uh, fair it is an honor to have him with uh, us. Uh, he will soon take part in a council ministers uh, meeting in his country. First question: What are the main challenges and opportunities of Europe-Africa cooperation, especially for Côte d'Ivoire? Good morning to all the participants. I cannot be with you today because there is a minister's council. Today we're going to talk about technological innovation. We want to build bridges between Africa and Europe. There have been significant advances my country has launched reforms we adopted a law recently there have been other initiatives There have been strategies. We would like to bridge the gap. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Ministre, pour. Uh... Thank you very much, um, Mr. Minister, for this introduction. Thank you very much. We'll speak to you again soon. I know you'll be busy, so uh, it won't take much time. There's a lot to do in the Minister's uh, Council. And now over to Afsa to Abiola. It is an honor and a pleasure to welcome you here. You represent women in Africa. You are the manager of this organization. So nowadays, how do women entrepreneurs and as you know uh, women entrepreneurs are a really important theme uh, 
Today it is a, a theme that is being promoted by the AFG through the SIBC today. So how can a woman can be at the forefront of uh, startups in the healthcare sector or as well in the IA space or agriculture sector? Good morning. It is an honor for me to be here. It is my first time here in Aix-en-Provence. First of all, forgive me. Um, I won't I am not, my, my mother tongue is in French, it is English, but my friend told me you better, it's, it is better to speak French in France, so I will keep on speaking French. First of all, I would like to explain to you why I'm convinced that women are, are powerful. My mother had the opportunity to go to a secondary school in my country, but not to university. She married my father, a businessman, and he told her, no worries, Kudi, that's her name. After we get married, you will be able to keep on studying. But shortly after getting married, she got pregnant. And in the next 15 years, she was taking care of the children. Oh, she was pregnant with a new child. In total, she had nine children. Seven of them are still staying with us. So she couldn't. Uh, study, but she decided to pursue a career and she decided to become an entrepreneur in my country. And she's a winner. She got the support of her husband, of her network, made up of women who were her high school friends, who stayed alongside her when they got to university. And they taught her how to be successful. My father told me he wanted to become the president of my country. That was in 93. He won the elections, but he was put into prison. So that's my woman that launched the pro-democracy movement in my country. She fought hard. She organized. Uh, she organized, she brought together journalists, women, syndicate, trade unions to fight for democracy. She was murdered by the army. And later on, my father was killed too. I lost both my parents, but through their experience, I discovered how powerful we can be when uh, people really want to change their reality. In my country now, for more than 25 years, uh, my country is a democracy. And m my mother her, my mother's life started when she became an entrepreneur because she discovered she could do things. That's why today Women in Africa supports women in Africa and I'm really honored to say that this year we will support 7,000 women in all countries of Africa. in mainly about 14 countries so Egypt, Morocco, Kenya, Nigeria, the Côte d'Ivoire and South Africa we are all over Africa because you asked me about a the role of uh, women in uh, developing Africa. You can switch to NG if you if you if it's easier for you. No, I just I just prefer to parler en votre langue.
No, I would rather speak in French. I would rather speak in your language. What I want to say is that African women cannot think that they can do whatever they want. They must show the value of their work. Even if, even if they show their value, they cannot suppose that everyone will support them because that is not how things are in Africa. In Africa, it's almost as if uh, people think that women do whatever they want, but uh, we need to support them. And I know that because if you look at African banks, they don't really give us funding specifically to women. Well, so we need to change everything to ensure that the women have uh, the um, support that we need and to enable us to move forward in agriculture and in other sectors. There was an entrepreneur in Ethiopia that collected all of the waste uh, produced by farmers and this was managed by a woman. It was one of the biggest changes in Africa and now farmers drop off their products and buyers come to buy them. This is why farmers use this platform these days but it is this it is this woman who created this change in Ethiopia mm. and uh, she required a lot of support to do so and if we continue to support her for example in the health sector we will see that uh, the, in Africa we have a lot of fake medication and people use drinking water and uh, you can use digital technology technology to see if the water is actually drinkable or not. Some of the women in our women in Africa network are doing very well. We have helped over twenty five thousand women for many years. And even here, if you were in our program, could you please stand up? So we have several women who are here, one at the back too, and they have received our support and our training and they have been mentored and invested in KPMG, EY, among others. This is why we must say that women in Africa don't have enough support and this must be changed if we want to change the future of Africa. Well said. Thank you so much for your very personal and poignant testimonial. Thank you really. Uh, another uh, round of applause for Afsat Abiola. Now going to hand over to Isabel. I want to ask you a very simple question. The Premier Minister spoke about the role of the private sector and public powers. So we need to think about how female entrepreneurship and inclusiveness works. What kind of roles uh, does it have? So we have two sides of the Mediterranean and how can um, women participate in this change? Thank you, Samir. getting an innovation hub to the forefront <coughs> must be done as it was said in the introduction and it is done via innovation we must find solutions that are very innovative for our future for many things including climate but not only and Innovation very rarely comes about of its own accord. It needs to come from an ecosystem and eco uh, innovation it should not be uh, in just one area. It needs to be part of a very diversified context. 
This is why innovation cannot just stay within a country or a city. It must be a cross-boundary approach. Not forgetting youth involvement as well. It's very important. Countries, especially in Africa, need to be thinking about how they can encourage entrepreneurship in their countries through development, by uh, supporting SMEs and micro companies. Solutions will be found in innovation and uh, <laughs> startup creation. So this is where we have developed a an innovative ecosystem which is now fully fledged of course it's nothing as perfect but we have been able to develop it throughout Europe and I think that what is essential is for us to speak about ecosystems it is not just a tool here an investment fund there an accelerator wherever it is really a set of things which need to chime together. They need to be heading in the right direction. It's part of a continuum where an entrepreneur finds themselves in a favorable context. So we need to think about supporting entrepreneurs. BPI France was created in 2012, but it was the fruit of the labor of many different entities, many different companies that had been working on innovation-oriented tools in uh, the 2000s is when we really started working hard and accelerating. Some African countries are currently creating innovative ecosystems. At BPI France, we do work with certain African countries that are interested in the idea of a one-stop shop. It's like a unique opportunity for African countries or French countries to have all of the BPI tools explained to them and the opportunities presented to them. This is the idea behind this project, so which are looking at supporting entrepreneurs. We support several African ecosystems and we always we're looking at uh, getting them inspired about what we're doing in France and we're delighted by what we have done so far. I think this is one of the ways that we can cooperate between Africa and and Europe. We have the boss of Aquati who is here. It's part of an African program that is financed by the uh, e uh, the EU and involves certain stakeholders so that we can connect companies together, get them to network, and help them find funding. So it's a great fun, it's a great opportunity. Thank you so much, Isabel. So before handing back over to Mariam Diop, who represents the uh, World Bank, I would like to just ask you, dear Minister, a few questions. First of all, what is the impact of youth in countries such as the Côte d'Ivoire? We know that President Hassan said uh, in 2020, uh, that actually uh, this year, 2023, is the year of youth. How can we get youth and turn them into a driving force for investment thanks to innovation? Mr. Minister, over to you.
we have 30 million people in our country we have uh, lots of youth coming onto the labor market every year and so many opportunities should be created for them we need to ensure that um, unemployment is as low as possible and that these people can find opportunities where they might be so us for us uh, young people are a real focus especially this year as you mentioned we are dedicating 2023 and saying that it is the year of youth in the Cote d'Ivoire that is our main focus this year young people are the future of our countries not just in Cote d'Ivoire but everywhere therefore we should ensure to include them in every kind of uh, business or economic or d approach that might be implemented in the coming years startups <clears throat> are a great opportunity for young people to get onto the labor market startups of course are one of the central pillars of any economy this is why we should be continuing to support them throughout their uh, endeavors let me remind you that the Côte d'Ivoire has a really dynamic ecosystem and a fantastic economy which uh, provides many opportunities not just for young people but for older people as well in many different areas we have put forward initiatives in this agricultural sector to try and get <coughs> young young people excited about to coming up with new innovative solutions to tackle the challenges of tomorrow thank you dear minister so we we understand what you're saying the youth is at the heart of economic growth and therefore the economic growth of the Côte d'Ivoire cannot uh, do without its young people the youth the, the the year of the youth as you have put it is uh, such a, a a key point of your future approaches and your your ideas of course the Côte d'Ivoire youth is the cornerstone of your economy thank you dear minister for sharing your vision I know that in two minutes you have to uh, attend another meeting so thank you so much for giving us your precious time thank you and I hope to see you soon in Marseille now moving on to Marianne Diop it's fantastic to have a uh, representative of the IFC so the World Bank Dear Mariam, how can technological startups, especially at the moment during uh, such a time of geopolitical shift, uh, support the cooperation between Europe and Africa? So perhaps you could uh, turn your microphone on and tell us about this, please. Okay, over to you then. So, Mariam, I think you have to turn your microphone on. You've muted yourself. Okay, I think we're going to try to sort out the technical issue and then come back to Mariam and Diop. But in the meantime, I'm going to ask uh, my next question to Arnaud Mercier. Yes, unfortunately, we, we, we can't seem to speak to Mariam Diop. I'm going to leave that to the tech team to sort out. And we'll come back to you in just a few minutes. So, 
co-constructing the future and tackling challenges together. We're going to ask you about uh, funding, but Isabel, uh, we're going to go to you next, actually. When we look at the forecasts, uh, such as uh, Horizon 30 with regard to investment and the potential of entrepreneurial ecosystems in Africa, what kind of uh, part do investors have to play to ex accelerate uh, in investment opportunities on the continent? As the Minister of Youth mentioned, uh, financial backers such as BPI have such a, an important role to play. Indeed, we do have a, an important role to play because when we were looking at developing tech, we absolutely require support and therefore investors can fill that role. Let me speak about uh, Tunisia as an example. I'm sure you're aware that uh, Tunisia is one of the first African countries to have put together a Startup Act. So they have a very suitable innovation ecosystem. They have also created NAVA, which is a, f a fund fund, which is currently looking at investing uh, in seed funds and VC funds. So this kind of work is very important to structuring things both in the short and medium and long term because it will help create local stock, uh, stakeholders to finance startups and um, implement financial levers because the World Bank has actually invested in the NAVA fund and worked alongside other investment funds in Tunisia. The World Bank has injected cash into this initiative. So what we hope will happen is to then in attract private investors to the ecosystem. And therefore, I would like to pay tribute to the work that has been done in Tunisia. We have spoken about many other fantastic uh, Tunisian startups, such as Astadid, which participated in the elaboration of one of the COVID vaccinations, as well as Expensia. So, two fantastic companies that have come out of Tunisian research. So, it's fantastic that Tunisia has put this ecosystem on the map. We also have other. Um, work being done alongside other stakeholders on the continent. So just to come back to the topic of investment, you know that in 2022, investors invested $5.2 billion in Africa. So that is a huge amount of money not just uh, in Africa, but in the world. So it's a huge percentage of what has been invested worldwide. It's a fantastic number to be able to apply to uh, African investment. So this will then create um, other opportunities specifically for Af American investors. In 2023, the numbers will be much higher. And I think that this is part of the innovation cycle. Companies actually started to be overvalued, so I think that we now need to continue along this path. But looking beyond these figures, other things that investors can bring to the table are things such as support to help structure things, strategies, and network. That is another part that they can play in the system. Thank you so much, Isabel. So we've spoken about investors. I'd just like to speak about uh, one of the plenary sessions this afternoon. From the seed to the unicorn is the title, so make sure you attend. So 
I'd just like to speak about ourselves. We have invested ourselves in Africa in funds of funds. So we have the Averores scheme, which in December 2023 uh, is going to start, and we funded it by the Casta de Depot uh, Fund. So this uh, was actually one of our first funds of funds uh, that has gone from Europe to Africa so Northern Africa specifically, now we have our fourth version uh, across the whole of Africa. Uh, so this is specifically geared towards um, venture capital in African tech. Mm, we're going to be specifically looking at African tech in more detail in the future. That's fantastic to hear. Thank you so much, Isabel. What great news. Okay, I'm now going to hand over to Hafsat because it's so great for us to have you here. Perhaps you could tell us more about your vision and your experience of female, Af uh, female African entrepreneurs. We do not speak enough about the part that African women investors have to play in the economic fabric. This participates in creating the ecosystem. So what kind of initiatives does Women in Africa put forward? So it's a large network in Africa that you preside over. And why is it it's so important for you to be present in this active and visible network? Thank you so much for your question, Samir. So you've spoken about uh, your fund, which was l created in Tunisia. We have a Tunisian woman here, actually. She's one of the leaders of this hub. So I see her as my sister. I love it when men support women. That is what makes the world a great place. I I do my best. So there are many banks, but when you ask a banker for opportunities, they say, oh, we can't find any female entrepreneurs to support. And there, of course, are always many problems. They think that it's very difficult to find qualified women to invest in. This is why we do a lot of advertising to try and change this image and demonstrate as well as prove that women exist, that we are powerful, that we can contribute to the economic sector and that women in Africa are magnificent. From October up until now, Shimon, are you in the room? Shimon is a colleague of mine who looks after the press uh, for women in Africa. So in just one month of working on this subject, in several different publications, he made sure that 36 million people gained a glimpse of women's entrepreneurial skills in Africa. So he did interviews on mm, TV, in the news, and it's fantastic. I really hope that he continues to do that. We need to ensure that people understand that women in Africa help mm, the e economy in Africa, they're not just working in the informal economy, so they are involved in the formal sector and they can create good companies and they are indeed able to oversee any kind of um, consideration, be it regular, regulatory or other. So we must show that women in Africa are a viable option. This is why we've been doing so much advertising and publicity because women in Africa are not like uh, women elsewhere in the world. It's very difficult to convince them 
to do their own advertising and publicity. But we need to change this image because if not, everyone will continue to think that women in Africa dream small. But if we were able to support Afri uh, women so that they dream big, then perhaps they can become role models for other women. This is why we want to change the economy in Africa because too many people just think that they are selling bananas on the side of the street. It's not a bad thing because of course they need to provide for their children. However, if we could hire young people in Africa Perhaps we have 800 million people. So this is a large population that will help us dream even bigger than we have done in the past. So we need to be supporting women to achieve this. And that is why I am saying that thanks to the university in Belgium, most of the women, uh, one of most of the professors are actually female and they have put their heads together to launch a project to research the idea of uh, how do you say seeds in French? It's a grain. So what kind of seeds can we use in Africa to uh, face up to climate change? So they're going to be starting to do training courses with associations that to work in the agricultural sector sector in Africa. I think this is really important because this is innovation. It's a winning it's a win-win exchange and this is why we need this is exactly what we need more of. we need a lot of organizations not just micro credit organizations but we we need to ensure that if we want to support large big dreams in africa then we must have macro finance and macro credit um, institutions this is why your president here in france maybe you don't like him but we can't deny that with regard to finding macro credit opportunities in Africa, it's Mr. Macron who actually has been at the spearhead of this initiative. So he has been the real spokesperson uh, in the G7 to raise 300 million euros and uh, give it to banks in Africa so that they can fund small scale female investors in Africa. We need more of this. We are not small in Africa. It's just that the world look, sees us as small. For people to grow, they need all of the right ingredients. Thank you so much, dear colleague Hafsat Abiola, for your precious words. Okay, so we've spoken about funding. I think we're coming to the end of the round table. We just have a couple of minutes left. And I'm now going to hand over to Arnaud Mercier for the final words. But before that, are we able to hear from Mariam Diop? Oh, ça marche. Can you hear me? <coughs> I have a question about financing. Today, you are the regional manager of Francophone Africa for IFC. And my question is, it is a question about finance. What are the main sources of financing to foster co-innovation between Europe and Africa? How can local actors access these funds and help starters to finance themselves? How can you help African ecosystems to grow? First of all, Thank you very much for inviting me. Congratulations on the organization of this event. I would have loved to be there. Congratulations to all speakers.
because they've been tackling very relevant topics. So there is a key role for in African entrepreneurship, first of all, because there are millions of Africans that are part of European diaspora. They uh, play a role in the development of the continent. Some of them decided to go home and to put their uh, skills at the service of the continent. And nowadays, they're a the catalyst in our ecosystems in Senegal, first of all, but in Tunisia and other Frank French-speaking countries too. And it's, it's really important because without talent, we cannot develop entrepreneurship. Secondly, African diaspora, especially uh, the one in Europe, is the first source of financing on the continent. There are remittances coming from a diaspora that represent that are uh, three times the levels of uh, public aid to development and direct investment abroad. French diaspora is increasingly active and uh, increasingly supports uh, uh, Africa. There are various organizations uh, to be na named. There are many investors uh, that are present on the continent. And AGFA um, is the main investor in our ecosystem because they bring they, they are different from other uh, investors in the world. It is the most active investor in Africa. As for uh, funds of funds, there are about uh, 10 investments in funds uh, based in Africa. Four years ago, we launched a new initiative it's called Catalyst. It helps, uh, it, uh, helps uh, support uh, uh, seed phase, so risky uh, phases uh, of a creation of startups, so we can bring financing to a new uh, startups in sectors that are underserved, mainly in Francophone Africa. And through this program, we have already invested $55 million in various emerging markets, so we can uh, supplement our activity of as a fund of fund, and we uh, could uh, finance various uh, actors in Egypt and in other countries of Africa. We are very active at the AFC in supporting entrepreneurs uh, through their accelerating incubating phases, and this is quite powerful because there is a high uh, learning curve for our ecosystem. We usually say that Africa is an, um, an ecosystem that has 20, that is lagging behind Europe, the US, as well as other developing countries such as India. And which means our, that our initiative are even more meaningful, initiatives such as Chapter 54 that was launched recently to build bridges between Europe and Africa so that entrepreneurs can uh, set up uh, trade partnerships. So that's the kind of initiative we need to uh, use the experience as well as the capitals, the uh, financing available in Europe and in more advanced markets and so that we can boost our African ecosystem. Thank you very much. We knew that the IFC World Bank Group is active in financing ecosystems, startups and funds and this ecosystem is lucky enough to be attractive to access such as the IFC. Thank you, Mariam. And uh, now, well, time flies. It has been a really interesting and emotional discussion. This is the end of this plenary session. And now over uh, to you, Arno, for the conclusion. The conclusion to this uh, fantastic plenary session about innovation hubs. Thank you very much, Samir. Thank you for inviting me. It is both an honor and a pleasure to uh, conclude this uh, plenary session of Emerging Valley right alongside these uh, great speakers. I am delighted to see that uh, along the years, uh, there are ecosystems getting more structured on both sides of the Mediterranean. 
And nowadays, uh, it is a financing is an important topic, and as you said, we are in a in an up bottom uh, cycle. But we need to uh, move forward, move faster to the next stages to uh, accelerate further but anyway there are measures being taken public measures on a wide uh, on a wide array of sectors there are important topics yesterday the metropolis has uh, rewarded a prize martin